in brotherhood and struggle, his profound principles be in sisterhood, brotherhood and struggle, his profound principled and forever. Our struggle is constantly and continuously against the oppressor and against all in us which is in contradiction to our values and the choice we've made. We choose the liberation of our people as our life's goal and struggle as the method to achieve it. Our choice is conscious, full and free. We accept all risk and welcome all rewards it brings. We have nothing better. Nothing better, more revolutionary or rewarding to do with our lives than to struggle. Struggle to bring into being a new world, a world in which we, our children, our people, and our people can live and love and create freely and stand and walk in a warmer sun. The pledge or the Kiapo is given to us by Dr. Maulana Karanga to Brother Malik Zulu Shabazz and the mighty defiant giant, to our esteemed elder, who is one who helped to impact on and shape my life, Sheikh Sharif, and to Imam Jamil al who as I sat as a young student in the university system, this bold black man under the name then of H. Rap Brown had a profound impact on my life to him as he is seated on our stage tonight. <laughs> to Brother Rafiki, to Sister Santiwa, to all who are seated on this dais, to our beloved sister who pretty much gave us a keynote, a keynote of sincerity that we would be mindful and not be forgetful and not be negligent in giving honor and respect to those who have labored for us. Our subject tonight is freedom or death. Freedom or death resist to exist. Freedom or death resist to exist. Freedom or death is not a song, and it's not so vainglorious. Freedom or death is a very serious statement. It is one that we cannot take lightly. When we say freedom or death, to me it does not mean either you Give me my freedom or I'm willing to die for my freedom. When I say freedom or death, I don't give a damn whether you give it to me or not. When I say freedom or death, I'm saying I'm taking freedom or I'm taking your life, cracker. Freedom or death, resist, God damn it, to exist. Ain't nobody going to give you nothing. Bring out the red dog, white and the blue here for me. Let's unfurl the girl. Last night we talked about the Statue of Liberty, the whore in New York Harbor. This flag holds no freedom, justice, and equality, no liberation and salvation for the black nation. As I bring you greetings from my leader, teacher, and guide, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, spiritual son and representative among us, the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, I say to you that under their teaching, this flag has much symbolism in it and it deals with the supremacy of the white man's world. We want to paint the picture tonight for freedom or death. Resist to exist. I believe in peace if possible, but violence when necessary. 
peace if possible, but violence when necessary. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand the principle of nonviolent struggle. I understand nonviolent struggle. But when it's time to throw down, it's time to throw down. It's not time to be nonviolent. In the book of Ecclesiastes, in the third chapter, it says there's a time and a season for everything under the sun. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to hug and embrace and a time to refrain from hugging and embracing. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time of love and a time of hate. A time of war and a time of peace. A time to heal and a time to kill. I say to you that we have to stop saying I'm willing to die for the struggle. What the hell are you willing to die for the struggle for? We've been struggling and dying all along. You've got to change that from I'm willing to die for the struggle to I'm willing to kill for the struggle. If you're willing to kill for the struggle, then you can be free. Now the first one that you must kill is that nigger in your head. Kill that nigger in your head. Kill the white man who has set up headquarters in your head and in your heart because the white man has set up an office he set up headquarters in your head or he has set up quarters in your head the white man rules from within us am i lying to you he has set up headquarters that's the first government that we must overthrow the first government that we must overthrow is the government of our thinking the government of our mind. That's the first government that we must overthrow. Freedom or death. Claude McKay said, oh, if we must die. He said, if we must die, then when the murderous and cowardly pack comes against us, though our backs are pressed against the wall, Claude McKay says, oh, if we must die, then we want to die with our back pressed against the wall, dying, bleeding, but fighting back. The Bible says reject the devil and he will flee from you. Reject the devil and he will flee from you. Reject him in your mind and in your conscience. Reject him in your heart. Reject his ideology, his philosophy, his doctrine, his way of life. Reject his Zionist, imperialist, capitalist, twisted, devious way. Reject it. Accept your own and be yourself. What is yourself? Who are you? Are you really a subject of this? What does this mean? Why does it have one, two, three, four, five, six. What, what, brother, would you hold that for me, please, sir? Why does it, oh, oh, no. why does it have six white stripes? One, two, three, four, five, six. What are the six white stripes for? The most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan teach us from the book of Revelations in the 13th chapter and the 18th verse. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number not of a spook. Ain't no spook devil. Ain't no devil under the ground with no red pantyhose on and no pitchfork. The devil is on top of the ground. There is no mystery god, no spook god sitting somewhere on a cloud or floating around Shazam or, or Abracadabra. Spookism. Spookism is an intense emotional commitment to a non-existent nothing. I'll run it again. Spookism is an intense emotional commitment. You can relax, don't you? Spookism, get a black man a black hand. The only reason he's holding it up is because he knows before the night is over, we're going to tear it down. That's the only reason he's holding it up. We're not going to pin the tail on the donkey tonight. Tonight, we're going to pin the tail on the hunky.
Bookism, an intense emotional commitment to a non-existent nothing. Shazam, poof, abracadabra. There's a difference between spookism and spiritualism. The African black man, as he is called, the African black woman, as she is called, is not one of just religion, but the root of Afrocentricity is spirituality. The black man is a spiritual man. The black woman is a spiritual woman. And you give me Islam, give me Christianity, give me Judaism, give me African traditional religion, give me that old time religion from Egypt or Kemet, and you will find that it comes from the nature, from the soul and from the heart of the black man and black woman. As we mentioned last night, we always believe in the one God. But whenever we believed in God, we always understood that there was the God and the Goddess the balance in nature. If we talked about, if we talked about uh, Olufun, then we had to talk about Elijah. If we talked about Osiris or Isis or Osar or Oset, then we had to talk about, we had to talk about one in order to talk about the other. If we talked about the Asante Hini, then we had to talk about the Asante Wa. We always struck the balance in nature. Because man and woman, according to this Quran, are twin halves of the same essence. Man and woman are twin halves of the same essence. We are at the root of all of the world's major religions. And before the night is over, we will touch on Islam and go deeper into Islam than we did last night. We will touch on Christianity and go deeper into it. We will touch on Judaism and go deeper into it. We will talk about the forming of an anti-Zionist front. We will talk about the forming of an anti-CIA front and the forming of a black or an African united front before the evening is over. But right now, let's get back to the United States of America. Would you hold it for me, brother? Revelation 13 and 18 again says, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is threescore. I need some of that white chalk for the blackboard. His number is threescore, and a score is twenty. Threescore is what? Sixty. His number is threescore. What? His number, according to Revelation, is 666. 666. Here is wisdom, let him that hath the understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is three score, 606. 666, the number of a man. And that is the number of the white man. Six marks the white man everywhere he goes. It was approximately 6,600 years ago that the white man came onto our planet. Approximately 60,000 were involved in this special process of sex, birth control, and ge genetic engineering that caused the grafting of the white race out of the original black nation. The white man, when he buries you, he buries you six feet in the ground. We said six thousand. Somebody will have to hold it. Approximately six thousand six hundred years ago, we said it was approximately sixty thousand. White man has approximately six ounces of grafted brain. We'll get into that a little later. You got seven and a half ounces of original brain. Average speed of thought, 24 billion miles per second. That's just average. White man buries you. He buries you how deep? Six feet in the ground. How many pallbearers carried a casket? Six pallbearers carried a casket. Is that right? When the white man got ready to tame the wild, wild west. You all right, black? 
when the white man got ready to tame the wild, wild west, he sent his marshal or his sheriff, coming from the Arabic root, Sharif, he sent his sheriff wearing the six-pointed star, wearing the pyramid of the original black man and woman, a symbol of our greatness when we were in power, and he turned another one upside down and superimposed it over the top of it to show that he would take that ancient wisdom, turn it around and turn it upside down and turn it against the black man and black woman. And so he came wearing a one, two, three, four, five, six-pointed star. On his poor Gimli herpes syphilis gonorrhea hip, he was wearing a six shooter. You can relax, you know. I'll get back to it in a minute. He was wearing a six shooter. We're gonna get into this rag in a minute. That's all it is, a goddamn rag. He was wearing a six shooter. Is that right? The white man's grammar system. His, you're studying here at Howard. His grammar and at UDC, his grammar system is based on the number six. Let's look at it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Past tense, present tense, future tense, right? Past perfect tense, present perfect tense, future perfect tense. One, two, three, four, five, six. His monetary system. Again, Revelation 13 and 18, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a, of a, that's almost right. We have to, we have to revise the Bible. It is the number of white. <laughs> Got to know how to translate that stuff. It is the number of a white man, and his number is 666. His monetary system. We have to we have to revise the Bible. It is the number of a white man. <laughs> Got to know how to translate that stuff. It is the number of a white man, and his number is six hundred and sixty-six. His monetary system is based on the number six. You count with me. You count, and I'll name it. The penny one. The nickel, the dime, the quarter, the 50 cent piece, the dollar. Based on the number six. The white woman says she wants a man tall, dark, and handsome, six feet tall. But you can't have me. <laughs> six feet tall. The white man's favorite drink, and some of your favorite drinks, comes in a six pack. <laughs> His flag, now we're really ready for it, brother. His flag has six white stripes in it. And the six white stripes represent the 6,000 years that the white man was to rule the darker people of the planet Earth. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven red stripes. The seven red stripes, unlike this flag, this flag has a red background. This flag, the red is interrupted by white. For six periods, it's interrupted by white. The red in this flag represents the sun, 853,000 miles in diameter. 2,679,785 miles in circumference, burning at the terrific temperature of 14,072 degrees Fahrenheit. But the sun shines freely on the good as well as the bad, the evil as well as the righteous. The sun shines on all. So the sun in this flag represents freedom. The star represents justice. In this flag, you've got, what, 50? Is it 50? I can't keep up with it. They're always taking something. Have they taken another island or another territory? 50 stars. 
This flag has one star in it. So there, under Almighty God's system, you have one form of justice. But under this flag, you got 50 different kinds of justice. You go to one state, they got a one state law. You go to another state, there's another state law. And you go to another state and the other state, and there's a different state law in each state that you go into. So it looks like you're going to get justice. And the stars here are on a blue background. What kind of background? Blue, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us, blue is a color of deception. We in the nation of Islam, in the FOI, we wear a blue uniform. We wear a blue uniform to show God's people coming up out of a world of deception and corruption and oppression coming up into righteousness, coming up out of that world. Blue is a color of deception. It looks like the sky is blue, but the higher up you fly, you find out it's really not blue. It looks like the water is blue, but the further out you go and scoop some of it up, you find out that the water is really not blue. It looks like you're going to get justice, but the closer you get to this thing, you find out that it's really not true, that you're not going to get any justice at all. It has seven red stripes because the seven red stripes represent, again, freedom, meaning that it started the world, started in freedom, and it will end in freedom. But it was interrupted for 6,000 years by the rule of the white man. So it is written in the Bible as it was in the beginning. So shall it be in the ending. That's what I say, as I mentioned last night on Cube's album, that the black man and the black woman have no birth record, no beginning and no ending, before Alpha and after Omega. This being true, as it started in freedom, it will end in freedom. You can let it down. It will end in freedom. This flag, brothers and sisters, drips with the blood of the black man and woman and the nations of the earth. But now, let us look at it. We can move it on the wing here. Many of you say, I don't dig the nation of Islam. I'm not down with that Louis Farrakhan, Elijah Muhammad stuff. Because I'm a true revolutionary. Well, what is a true revolutionary? Are you really a true revolutionary? The true root of revolution, the, etymog the etymological root of revolution is revolve. In order to have revolution and revolving and motion, there must be light. In the universe, there is light. The planet Earth spins at 1,037 and a third miles per hour, making a complete revolution on its own axis every 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 46 seconds. But if there were no light in the universe, striking the planet Earth at its imaginary equator, the planet Earth would not spin. All of the planets spin because of light. They revolve, they revolve because of light. When we look at Pluto, the distant planet, 4,600,000,000 miles from the sun, Pluto spins and moves and rotates under the divine light coming by God's permission, by Allah's permission from the sun. Movement based on what? On what? But what kind of light? It can't be any kind of light. To cause movement, it must be the right light. To cause movement, it must be the right philosophy, doctrine, ideology, truth. It must be the right light. It can't be a flashlight. You can shine a flashlight on the earth. It's not going to cause a revolution. The earth is not going to revolve. It can't be a match light. Huh? It can't be a candle light. It can't be a flood light, and it can't be a bud light. <laughs> it's got to be the right light in order to cause a revolution. How can you have a revolution if you ain't got no light? 
bean pies and boat ties. Ain't where it's at. I ain't down with no bean pies and no boat ties. Cause in all them suits and white shirts and bow ties, wearing the white man's cloak, I'm a revolutionary. Are you really? Do you understand these suits? Do you understand this bow tie? Do you understand what these men are standing for? Or is your revolution just in your head or just in the bed with some white woman? That's the question. Tell me what kind of revolutionary you are and you're a revolutionary by day and walking your white dog by night. In a revolution, you got to know what to wear and when to wear it. In a revolution, you must have the proper war robe. Let me run that again. In a revolution, you must have the proper war robe. Your war robe must be in order. If you're in a war where you're fighting in the jungle, you must go into your war robe and pull out a uniform that blends in with the jungle. So that when you move through the jungle, it looks like the trees or the leaves or the bushes or the branches. It looks like the breeze is blowing the leaves, but it's really you with death in your hands and in your head and in your heart for your enemy moving through the jungle. But you gotta wear a uniform. You gotta take off your civvies. You gotta take off all of that and go into your war drove and pull out the proper clothes for the occasion. You understand? If you're in the desert, you've got to take off your civvies, you've got to take off your camouflage uniform for the jungle, and you've got to put on a uniform that's the color of the sand, that's the color of the desert. Your tanks, your jeeps, or whatever you have has to be the color of the sands of the desert so that when you move, even though your enemy might be observing from a high observation point, when you move because your uniform from your wardrobe uniform from your wardrobe is the color of the desert it looks like the breeze or the dust is fan is blowing in the desert but it's really you death moving through the desert advancing on your enemy but now we don't live in the desert I'm not no goddamn dirty dusty no good desert Arab I don't give a damn about the Arab and believe me, the Arabs don't give a damn about me either. <laughs> I'll get into them no good imposter Johnny come lately Arabs in a minute. And that old hook nosed bagel eating Jew, so called Jew, in a minute. But when you. When you. You got to understand whenever you're going to fight a war and you're talking about freedom or death, you've got to understand, again, philosophy, ideology, plan, doctrine, strategy, logistics, tactic, terrain. You got to understand all of these things. You got to know how to make a noise in the east and strike in the west. You got to know how when the enemy appears to be strong, you may at points appear, if you are weak and have not been able to strengthen your forces yet, you've got to appear at some point to retreat. But when the enemy is weak or when the enemy is off guard and asleep, you advance and attack. You've got to understand warfare. We're not in the desert. We're not in the jungle. But we're in the urban city. And so when you're in the urban city and you're a freedom fighter, you're a revolutionary, then you have to wear the uniform of the urban center or the urban city. You have to put on the proper uniform from your war throne. So I'm here to tell you that this is the uniform of the urban guerrilla warrior. This is the urban guerrilla warrior's uniform. This is the uniform from the urban guerrilla warrior's war throne. His what? His war drove. You can take the 
Don Crescent off, take all your jewelry off, and more. wear string ties sometime, wear bow tie, it's fashionable, it's stylish in America. Put your bomb in your briefcase, hypothetically. Put your bomb in your briefcase. And you walk to the top of the Empire Snake Building. And your bomb is ticking. White man see you coming, but you got on the proper uniform from your wardrobe. So when he see you coming with your briefcase and everything, he says, oh, are you doing, guy? Tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. He said, how you doing, guy? Good morning, guy. Good morning. Gee whiz, you look great, old buddy. And in his mind, he's saying, this is good fella Willie nigger here. So that's one of my niggers there. I'm proud of that nigger. And you say, morning, sir. How you doing? Morning. Tick, tock, tick, tock. You catch the elevator. You're on the way up. And you speak to everybody in the elevator. Morning. How are you doing? Tick, tock, tick, tock. All the way to the top. You leave it in the appropriate place. This is for a movie, you see. You leave it in the appropriate place. Don't forget the term movie. You leave it in the appropriate place. Leave it there. Tick, tock, tick, tock. You go back and catch the elevator. Have a nice day. Everybody have a nice day. You on your way out. Good day, sir. Good day, ma'am. They thought that's a good nigga. That's one of the best niggas we got. Why? Because you had on the proper uniform for the occasion. You chose the proper uniform from your wardrobe. These men that you're looking at, they are dressed to kill. They dress to kill. They're wearing the uniform of the urban gorilla. The urban gorilla must know how to maneuver. And then there are other times when the urban gorilla has to take this uniform off. And the urban gorilla puts on his African crown, or his queen, who is the warrior, a revolutionary, or freedom fighter, puts on her crown and her gown. What is the occasion? What face do I wear? And the urban gorilla puts on his African crown, or his queen, who is the warrior, a revolutionary, or freedom fighter, puts on her crown and her gown. What is the occasion? What face do I wear? And when do I wear that face? Y'all ain't no revolutionary. Who else do you know that has this many black men all over America organizing with a supreme captain, with an assistant supreme captain, with first lieutenant, supreme first lieutenant, supreme second lieutenant, third lieutenant, squad leaders, section leaders, Regional captains, assistants to them, regional first officers and second officers, local captains, local officers. Where else do you know men organizing like that? But I'm with the brothers with the guns, armed struggle. Nigga, you don't even own a cap gun or a water gun. Who you fooling? You ain't even fired a pistol. Only thing you fire is... And get scared of that when you hear it. But you are revolutionary. This is the only army in the midst of us that has the mass appeal. Oh, there are other armies forming. And before it's over, all the units are going to hook up. But this is the above ground army that is attracting the masses and waking the masses up. You must understand that when you're behind enemy lines, you must know how to maneuver behind enemy lines. You can't act like you over in some distant land and you can just walk around with your gat and get everything all together. You gotta maneuver a certain way when you're behind enemy lines. Again, you gotta make a noise in the east and strike in the west. You gotta give your enemy one impression while you're planning something else. All military strategists will tell you that deception and the devious route and the element of surprise is the best way to go. You don't come out and tell your enemy that on such and such a day, 
I'm going to do so and so. Hell, I ain't got to wait for you, nigga. We learn that in the street. You don't tell nobody in the street, I'm going to get you. I'll be, you just wait right here. I'll be back. What's the next thing they say? They say, no, nigga, you get me. No, nigga, you ain't going nowhere. Mop, mop, mop. You don't tell nobody you going, I'm going to get my stuff. No, either you come with your stuff or you don't talk no stuff. Huh? The most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, they say if you don't have the power to do, you shouldn't have the mouth to say. If you don't have the power to do yet, you should not have the mouth to say. You can't play revolution. This white man is nothing to play with. This white man is a cold-blooded killer. He's the most notorious gangster and outlaw on the face of the planet Earth. Look how they murdered those people in Iraq. Sister showed you the charred bodies. Look how they murdered them. Look how they dropped the bomb on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. This is a cold-blooded beast. He's not impressed by your talk. He's not impressed by your revolutionary words. If you don't have the power to do, you shouldn't have the mouth to say. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan say that no woman, no man should speak ahead of their actual power to do. Don't speak ahead of your actual power to do. If you don't have a certain percentage of the masses already with you and you have not properly politicized and organized, Sister Santi, what, Brother Rafiki, they hit it and hit it and hit it tonight. If you have not organized the people, we are taught that nothing is more powerful than the people when organized. But if you have not organized them, if you have not properly politicized them, then you are not going to be able to mobilize them and galvanize them when it's time to move. You'll be out there by your silly self. The revolution must be for the battle, and the battle and the struggle is for the minds and hearts of our people. We must gain the minds and hearts of our people first. Don't waste your whole youthful life, the youth of your life, rejecting right guidance and divine leadership that God has raised up in your midst. Waste all of your years of youth talking and dreaming about a revolution, and you're doing nothing to bring the revolution except talk about it. You waste all of your years of youth and every generation that comes along among the oppressed masses of black people in the hells of North America. Every generation wastes, wastes its youth looking for some imaginary revolution when if there's to be and there is to be a revolution, you must make a revolution. And before you can make a revolution, you must have revolutionary thought revolutionary ideology, revolutionary doctrine, revolutionary philosophy, revolutionary habits, revolutionary lifestyle, revolutionary religion, revolutionary economics, revolutionary education, revolutionary love making all the way to your pillow. You gotta be a true revolutionary. You can't be faking and shaking. You gotta be a true revolutionary. As I say on the Q's album, you got to be saints, saviors, soldiers, scholars, healers, and killers. You got to be saints, saviors, soldiers, scholars, healers, and killers. And you got to know when to come in and out of each one of those roles for the balance. Stop talking about armed struggle until you have properly armed yourself. Arm yourself or harm yourself. Arm yourself or harm yourself. Arm yourself with the proper knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and light that can bring about movement and revolution. That's what you got to do. Freedom or death. I don't hear that coming up out of the leadership of 
If we'll just take them for an example, that's our family. I don't hear that coming up out of the leadership of South Africa, so-called South Africa or Zambia. I don't hear freedom or death on the lips of Nelson Mandela. I don't care whether you like it or not, Nelson Mandela, though I love him and honor him and respect him for the great struggle and sacrifice that he has made over the past 27 years of his incarceration and captivity. I don't see the revolutionary leader of South Africa coming up out of the heart of Nelson Mandela. But you are not critical thinkers. You don't critically think and analyze anything out. You are an emotional, lightweight people that are just blown up like the dust that eating easy wind or breeze that comes along. Anybody that will get on the TV and challenge the white man or talk bad or the white man locked up for 27 years and somebody got a little slogan or a button they wear, you say, that's my leader. Nelson Mandela is still talking about one man, one vote in South Africa. I don't give a damn about no one man, one vote in South Africa. One man, one vote for who? The cracker doesn't deserve no goddamn vote in South Africa or nowhere. But our focus right now is on South Africa. One man, one vote, a multiracial government. Wait a minute, Mandela. You already made an ass. Ask somebody if you don't really know what I'm talking about. He made a behind out of himself when he came to America. Stood up in Yankee Stadium in New York and put on the white man's Yankee cap. Somebody, he was an honorary Yankee. Then he went around saying that when he was in prison, locked up, that he was hurt when he heard about the Kennedys being assassinated. What in the hell do I care about the Kennedys dying? Better than that, what in the...